pressurized section and the International Space Station is opened and the special purpose dexterous manipulator is getting power. So things are looking good on the International Space Station. And here this afternoon to give us an update on all these activities is International Space Station Flight Director Ginger Couric. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It was indeed a great day yesterday and we were able to ingress the uh, JLP. The crew did shoot some high definition video footage which we'll be downlinking uh, shortly after crew wake today once we get the EVA kicked off. All right, great. Well, um, I understand that the crew got ahead of schedule in the JLP commissioning activities earlier this morning. Um, I guess that's what you just told us about. Yes, they. Um, uh, when you look at the timeline, they mark activities gray when they're complete. And uh, we looked at uh, the today's timeline, and they had marked off several boxes on there. So they actually got several hours ahead of the timeline. So we were able to move up um, some additional activities from flight day seven onto today's timeline, as well as plan uh, a repair of a multimeter that uh, we the crew initially reported was. Uh, damaged and that needs to come home on the shuttle. So we have a, a lot of time to work with tomorrow and in preparation for them getting even further ahead, we've identified tasks and future flight days that we could move up. Will the JLP tasks still mostly be by mission specialist to Cal Doy? Yes, most of them will be by him and, and Commander Peggy Whitson will be assisting as well. Okay. And then moving on to the other mission objectives, how now that the Dexter is getting power from Canadarm2, what's the plan for using the Canadarm2 on the second spacewalk of the mission, which is scheduled to start in just a few hours? Um, yes, we will be using the uh, Canada Arm 2 as planned uh, to support the uh, assembly of the arms on um, Dexter uh, during the EVA. Um, but overnight, um, right now it is connected to the uh, SPDM. And uh, in the morning when the crew wakes up, the crew will um, release the SPDM and uh, position it in a position that will uh, be ready for the EVA activities. Following the EVA, we will re-grapple the SPDM and uh, stay it that way in the overnight config. How long will it stay there? Do you know at this point? It will stay there until flight day eight. Okay. Well, can you tell us a little bit about what the crew is going to be doing on this second spacewalk? Yeah, and when I explain it, it's going to sound really simple, but they're going to be assembling the arms on uh, the SPDM. And uh, actually, it's going to, we anticipate that it will take a full seven hours in duration. Um, the assembly of these arms and the configuration of those arms for nominal operations actually is, uh, takes a, a very um, intricate series of, uh, and, and highly choreographed series of events that must occur. Um, so it will actually take the full seven hour duration just to assemble the arms. Okay. Um, and then I guess that's it for that spacewalk, but it's not it for the SPDM assembly. There's one more spacewalk. With right. We have one more uh, spacewalk scheduled on flight day eight to uh, complete the assembly of the, of the SPDM. So as you can see, after three EVAs, it's, it's, been a, uh, it's a very complicated piece of hardware, um, uh, but we're, we're looking forward to having it assembled. All right. Well, anything else that you think we should know about? Uh, no, other than we're looking forward to uh, the EVA today. All right. Well, thank you so much, Ginger. Again, that was Station Flight Director Ginger Carrick.